Thank you, Salad, for sponsoring this video. Today, I will challenge myself to make this go from good to great in under one hour. This is a current design from Shindi Fatika. This is an app that allows you to book villas around the world. So let's talk about the things that we can improve on on this design. This back button is hard to notice. Images are very important, especially on expensive villas. You want to evoke a feeling that makes you want to stay in it. So I think it's a pity for the images to be hidden at the back. Let's not cover it up by the information in the front. There could be also more than one image. We could make use of this image space to introduce a gallery somewhere around here where users can swipe left and right to navigate between different pictures. These images could move to the top, right? And this is the title of the villa, but the text could be larger to give a better hierarchy between what is the most important thing that we need to see and what is the other text. As for the pricing, we should state that this is from a certain price per night because the rate would differ depending on the dates that you choose, the number of rooms, and whether it's high or low season. The sizing of the text is kind of all over the place. There is, you know, smaller size, middle, large. Let's try and standardize the typography. So this line height is a little hard to read. Let's give it a little bit more spacing between the text. I think it's not necessary to show customer service up front unless this is what you encourage your users to do. I don't think it's a good idea if everyone comes on this villa booking app and just keeps calling your customer service, right? Maybe the button to call customer service can be deprioritized. The button height of this book now is a little too short. People with fat thumbs would have a slight problem accessing it. I'll also um, change this to book now instead of booking now. These ratings should be somewhere inside here. I would encourage to have reviews in this page to see what other visitors think about this villa. Now that we have laid out the problem with the design, let's talk about content. First thing first, we should have a cover image, gallery of images, villa's name, the location. The location would consist of the address and distance, which is not necessary. There should be an about price from price per night. And this price varies depending on low or peak day. So after checking the Airbnb app, they show the prices based on the earliest available date so that the users don't need to select a date before a price could be shown. There should also be something like a user input where they could select the check-in dates, check-out dates, number of adults, number of children, number of rooms. I won't be designing this in this session, but it's just something that we should keep in mind when you design something, and it helps you in organizing the layouts properly. There is also facilities, or some call it amenities, ratings, number of reviews. The primary call to action is to book now. The secondary call to actions could be to contact customer service, to save this villa for later, maybe share it with their friends. And let's talk about the ideas that we have to improve this page further. The first one could be maybe to create a sense of urgency through like telling people how many people are looking at this listing right now, or maybe how many rooms are left. This is also known as the scarcity effect. We can also bring the unique selling points up front. For example, Booking.com has this highlights section where they tell you what's the best thing about this property that you should know about. You could also introduce visible lifeboats. For example, free cancellation in case you change your mind. Airbnb has this house rules section where you could state the check-in and out time, you know, if you allow pets, if there's any age restrictions, payment TNCs and the cancellation policy. And any fees that users should know about should also be listed on this page. But you don't need to show the exact fees because this requires the users to select a date first and depending on the different types of the rooms and the people staying in this villa, your fees may vary. We could also provide more details about the area. For example, what are the nearby facilities? Is there any public transport nearby? Before we start the redesign, let me introduce you to today's sponsor, Setup. As someone juggling multiple income streams, my days can get pretty chaotic. I simply don't want to waste time searching for the right tools to optimize my workflow. Instead of searching through a sea of options, I use Setup. It gives me access to over 230 top quality apps on Mac and iOS. Here are some of my favorites. Leveraging on AI to get things done, I use Typing Mind, a cheaper alternative and a better UI for ChatGPT. I also use CleanShot X to capture screenshots, screen recordings, capture websites or design reference. To stay focused and block distractions, I use Session. 
Without setup, I will need to pay for each of these tools separately. Some of these cost more than setup itself. Try setup for 7 days free using this link. After that, it's only $9.99 each month. Now let's kickstart the redesign. I start the redesign by referencing other apps in a similar space, particularly apps like Airbnb, Booking.com, Expedia, and the likes. This helps me get an overview of what design patterns are established in these apps because that's what the users are most probably familiar with. I also took a look at the actual villa listing on Booking.com. We'll start by making the back button more prominent. I was also trying to figure out what the original font was. I went with plus Jakarta Sans for now. I continued to populate the page with all the data I can think of to get an idea of how much information is on that page. This process is basically a lot of back and forth, referencing different apps, thinking about the layout again and again, processing different information. It's a chaotic process. While I was at it, I was thinking, since this is a villa booking app, why not give it a luxury feeling to it? So I also looked into apps that have a elegant, classy or luxury look and feel to get an idea of how the UI should feel like. One way is to have minimal icons with thinner lines so that it gives it more space, more breathability. Spacings between sections should be more spaced out. Then I looked up some fonts and decided to go with Optima which is the same font that Aesop is using. I added the book now button, tweaked the line height just to give balance between the top and bottom padding. At this point, I also started to experiment with different colors, different layouts, different call to action placements. When designing interfaces, sometimes the first cool idea that comes to your mind may seem like a good idea, but after testing it as a whole with the rest of the layout, you will realize that maybe it's not the right one. This is why it's really important to not settle on the first idea that you land on and experiment with different design choices. Walk away, come back again, and see if you still like the design. Even for the image gallery on the top, I experimented with different UI just to make sure I've exhausted all options before settling on one. I continue to design the bottom sections where these are collapsible and expandable. For the review section, we could have it expanded by default. This can be tweaked during development. I'm kind of liking the feel of this layout, where the title is on top and the reviews are brought to the top as well to give trust to the users. And I wanted to evoke a luxury feel to it, and hence the whole page is structured like a magazine, where you come in, and it tells you welcome to this villa and shows you a beautiful picture of it. At this phase, it's all about experimenting with different layouts, different design patterns on repeat. Next up, I'm basically playing around with typography. Remember what I said about wanting to highlight the description of the villa? I removed the about us label before the paragraph just to give some continuity to the location of the villa. Imagine someone telling you, welcome to this villa, here's a photo of how it looks like, and here is a beautiful story about this villa. Next up, I worked on the amenities section. It's collapsible and expandable. I turned these into interactive components so that in prototype mode, I can collapse and expand using Smart Animate. Let's work on the highlights section. Highlight section is where the most important, unique selling points of this villa will be shown to the user upfront. So I wanted this to really stand out, but not in your face. I was thinking of having it in swipeable cards so that users can swipe left and right to see. And again, using minimal icons throughout the entire page just to have consistency. I've also experimented with using a darker blue as the background. But the light blue background gives a calmer feeling compared to the dark blue one. A great skill to have besides design is writing. And in this case, UX writing. Good UX writing elevates the app experience. It makes the user more delighted. So a good thing to learn is how to write humanized copy that is delightful and matches the brand's tone and voice. In the interest of time, I did not design the other sections in this page. 
I was supposed to design this in one hour, but I ended up spending three hours. This was necessary because I don't want to rush into making rash design decisions just to fulfill a one hour design challenge. I changed the design of the footer. The earlier one was rounded like a button, but it looked really messy when viewed as a whole. I prototyped this in such a way that when a user arrives on the screen, they don't see the footer because I don't want the footer to be interrupting with their reading experience. As the user scrolls down, the header gets fixed to the top and the footer appears from the bottom. While I'm at it, I felt there was something bothering me with the user experience. I didn't like the idea that when I'm scrolling, I don't see the villa's images anymore. So in option two of my design, I have the image gallery fixed to the top as soon as the user scrolls down. The user could still see the beautiful images of the villa while they're browsing things like the highlights, amenities, and whatnot. And this is the result. Personally, I prefer option two. Let me know what you think in the comments below, whether is there a better way to do this? And if there is, share your thoughts below and let's learn from it together. I hope you gained value from this video. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this redesign. If you enjoyed this series, watch the previous episode here. Check out my UI UX design playlist here and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.